What's up guys, welcome to Built. Today we are building a fully custom, 100% fiberglass front bumper and front fender. We're going to complete the front end of this MGB. We're at a really exciting stage in this build. We're starting to put stuff back together and getting to see the final result. And today, you will get to see what this kind of full body kit looks like back on the car. It is so exciting. But this video took me a really long time to make, so we're going to have to go back in time uh, to when we started the video. But before we do that, here's a word from the people that made today's video possible. Mobile games are getting extremely good, and today's video is brought to you by the mobile game that I've been playing recently, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid has tons of depth with over 500 unique characters, each with their own skill trees and artifacts that you can upgrade to build your character the way that you want. This is actually the first mobile game ever that I've got on YouTube and looked up strategies on how to build my team and how to build each character that I have. Now it shouldn't surprise any of you that my favorite part of this entire game is the customization, that with the character design. You guys know I love design and customizing and it's really the only reason I play video games and Raid has no shortage of customization. You have tons of heroes, each with different armor sets that'll give you different abilities and buffs and all the designs are really, really incredible. I found myself recently just going into the menu of all of the heroes and just looking at the different heroes and designs just because they're really great. Now I'm still kind of in the mid game of Raid and my favorite hero right now is one that I got in the beginning. His name is Gaelic or maybe it's Gallic. Either way, he's my favorite. He has some massive attacks, but uh, like before, the thing that drew me to him was the design. He's super cool looking, and <laughs> that's why I picked him. Now, the whole reason Raid is sponsoring this video is because they just did a huge update called the Doom Tower. The Doom Tower is a giant tower with 120 floors and 12 unique and super challenging bosses. There's never really been a better time to start playing this game and the best part about it is Raid is going to hook up every built viewer with a kind of digital care package. and It's totally free. So if you want to get a huge head start in Raid and support Built, go hit that link in the description. You're going to get a new champion named Bulwark who's going to do great things for you in the Doom Tower as well as against the Clam Boss. You're also going to get 50 gems, an XP booster, energy refills, and an Ancient Shard just for logging in. Now if you've never played before, you need to know that's a big deal. Now all of this treasure will be waiting for you right here in the inbox. Now, if you're quick enough, you can join the clan I started. It's called Built Official. I know not super original, but it'll be easy to find. Thank you so much to Raid Shadow Legends for supporting Built. And if you guys love Built and love getting free content, click that link below, download the game. It's totally free and it's definitely worth checking out. Let's get back to the video. All right, so the last fiberglassing video, we made this, which is the fender for that. We're gonna put that on in this video. But we're going to start by getting the bumper and the other fender sorted. Now, this is a long-term video. I think it's going to take me like two weeks, maybe more, um, just because of all the dry times. So we'll have to, you know, sand this and epoxy it and dry, let that dry and then gel coat and let that dry and then pull the mold and let that dry and then pull the parts and let those dry as well. So it's going to be a long-term thing. So I don't know how, I don't know how I'm going to edit this video, but this is the intro. We've got the bumper right here and the fender right here. If this is the first one you've seen, we built both of these from scratch. So this is a bumper designed by me, built by me in my garage. And same with these fenders. Now the fenders, we started with fenders off of a 911 GT2, I think, like a not like a um, like an 80s model, 70s, 80s model, something like that. The one with the big old wing and the giant scoops. But we started with that and built the headlight buckets and built that back portion all to fit my MGB. The front bumper, we started with an MGB lip, which is this piece down here. We extended it about eight inches, built this center section here, and then all of this was built by hand with like cardboard, paper, uh, some clay, some more cardboard, a little bit of fiberglass, a little bit of Bondo, and then this white stuff is drywall putty. It's super easy to sand, that's why it's on here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the sander out, we're gonna knock all this down really fast with the sander. We'll spread some more drywall putty on it. And then I gotta wait like a full day for that to dry, maybe more because it's so cold. And uh, we'll do that one more time. I think at that point, we're gonna be smoothed out all the way and ready to move on to epoxy, which will allow us to pull the mold. Let's get to work. These should look a little bit different from the last time that you saw them. This gold, all this gold is just flashing 
um, I'm using to smooth out uh, kind of this underneath, underside, whatever of the bumper. Uh, I blocked off these holes um, with it as well. And then I've actually added some here that I sort of tore, tore off by accident. Um, but on this edge and that edge, because I'm gonna lengthen those edges down so I can cut a radius out of them when they're on the car. But the first thing is gonna be epoxy. It's just a, the one-to-one -one epoxy, same kind of stuff you put on countertops and floors and all that cool stuff. And uh, we're gonna coat the entire thing with that. Let it sit for, I think, 24 hours, and then we will do our gel coat and start building our molds for these pieces. Very stoked. Um, with these long-term ones, sometimes I forget to film, so I'm not sure what I filmed last, but all you need to know is I did a lot more sanding, and that's just, <laughs> that's just the name of the game with these things. Um, I did get some awesome tips from a fellow YouTuber. I'll put his YouTube name here. I can't remember. His name's Mark, but I can't remember his actual YouTube name, so I'll just put it right here. Thank you so much for all of the helpful information. Some of the stuff I'm going to be using, some of it I can't on these molds because I just didn't plan well enough for it, um, but I will be using the stuff that you taught me uh, as I move forward. The stuff that you're producing is sick. So go check him out. Let him know that uh, you appreciate him helping me because I appreciate him helping me and uh, helping me kind of figure out this mold making process. All right. Epoxy time, let's do it. This is one of my favorite parts. We're gonna pull the plug out of the mold. Outside part mold, inside part plug, tile wedges, I think is what they're called, tile wedges. Um, I don't know what you use them for, maybe, I don't know what you use them for, for tile, but they work really well to pull molds apart. was difficult. <sighs> that was hard. <laughs> that was legit hard. But uh, it looks okay. All things considered. My little openings right here didn't really work. I tried to make them out of like body filler basically and they, it just fell apart. But that's okay. This will all get cut out. So if it's rough, 
Doesn't matter. Everything else though feels so good. Now I did realize what I was doing wrong. Um, the first few times I had those issues and I couldn't figure out what was going on, if it was gel cut thickness or whatever. What it was is I wasn't letting my wax and then PVA dry out all the way. So the PVA wasn't all the way dry and then when I put fiberglass on it or in this case gel coat, polyester gel coat on it, uh, the gel coat wouldn't cure because it would mix in with the PVA. So that's what was happening, which is great because now all this gel coat is cured. None of it came off. It's really, really cool. This is going to be a super hard mold to make, so I'm not super excited about that. But we do have a mold. We did have to destroy our bumper a bit to get the mold off. So uh, this is the last. This is the. This is it. <laughs> This is our only hope. Help us, Obi-Wan. People have been asking me about kits, so am I going to make this kit? I would love to, uh, but these molds would not be the ones that I use. My plan for this kit is to pull my own molds like I have been doing, body work them, get them all great and awesome, and then if I have enough interest in a kit, I will take it to a fiberglass manufacturer to produce the molds in the kit. This time we did a one piece. You'll notice this is one piece. And uh, that was thanks to some advice I got from Bald Guy Creations. I think it's Bald Guy Creations. Bald Man or Bald Guy Creations is one. Anyways, that's Mark. He uh, follows the channel. He builds fiberglass stuff on his YouTube channel. Go check him out. Uh, he's been sending me some emails saying, hey, try this, do this differently. And he messaged me after the last video and said, hey, you need to make that out of one piece. I didn't think it would work, and it totally did. Um, or I say the first time I didn't think it would work and after he told me I figured I'd try it and this is gonna be much better I'm not gonna have that seam that I had it lowered my production time it fixed a lot of problems that I had so I'm very excited about that this all feels really really good super super smooth that's awesome it feels so good um, so I'm really stoked to pull a part of this I feel very confident that this part is gonna go well I don't know about the bumper before we can get into any of that uh, we've got to coat these in some wax and then uh, we'll let that dry and then do some PVA and let that dry and then we can do gel coat and let that dry and then we can do fiberglass and hopefully it'll go really well and we will only have to do this one time. <laughs> That's the plan. stuff pre-cut for the fender. We're going to do the fender first because it's easier uh, and I've done it a lot now. So I'm going to go ahead and do it, get it out of the way. The bumper is going to be a little bit more difficult. I think I'm going to actually lay it up in sections thanks to another YouTuber named Builder Creator. Uh, he's been giving me some tips and I've been watching his videos. He's building a 200 mile per hour supercar in his garage uh, and uh, it is sick. So go check him out. That's just a shout out because he's making great content and you guys need to see it. Uh, but anyway, we'll do that on the front bumper, but I'm going to kind of get a warm-up in right here with the fender and uh, hopefully 
uh, make it go well. It is very cold today, and fiberglass and cold are, uh, they don't like each other. They're like nemeses, and so hopefully uh, we'll get this thing to cure. I have had better luck with resin curing in the cold in fiberglass than I have with gel coat. So this gel coat is nice and dry now, which is great because um, it was not that yesterday. Uh, so we're good to go. I think it's going to be fine, maybe, hopefully. Let's get it going. So I found this really, I don't know if I've said this in this video, this video has taken me a long time. I've been doing it kind of in my free time until this week, so it's taken me a long time to film. So I don't know if I've said this yet, but this cheap resin is super thick. It's like a repair resin. I'm purposely holding it away from my nose, for those of you that are concerned. Um, I don't have any MEKP in there, but this stuff still is very strong. So either way, very thick, so what I'm doing it's thinning it out with some acetone, some thinner, about 10%, a little less than 10%, but because 10 I think is the limit, and then it, you start having cure time, so I'm going a little bit under that. Um, and that gives it kind of a viscosity that's closer to the higher end stuff. This is more of a, this is kind of a waste not, want not principle. I have some higher end resin here. We'll use that on the bumper, but I had this left over, so I wanted to go ahead and use it. But if you thin it out as much as possible, it, it does pretty well. It doesn't quite wet out as fast as the expensive stuff, but to give you an idea, this cost me $45 with the acetone, and the expensive stuff cost me like 60 or so. So, not a huge savings, but this I can get locally. Most of what I've read online says don't do this. But it is crazy cold outside. Behind me it is freezing rain. We don't get snow here in Alabama, we get freezing rain. And uh, it's just not working. This stuff is not uh, gonna cure. So I'm gonna close this. This whole garage is made out of freezer panels. They're all insulated. I've never tested them out. And there's a lot of gaps, so I don't know if it's gonna work. But we're gonna run this heater in here and uh, see if we can't raise the temperature 10 degrees or so, at least so I can't see my breath anymore. Um, and hopefully, this stuff will actually cure and we can move on to the bumper. All right, so this thing's been running for, I don't know, like an hour. It's actually pretty comfortable in here now, so I guess the panels are doing what they're supposed to do. I bet if I sealed up all the air and stuff, or all the openings, it would be pretty warm in here. But it is decently warm, and my fiberglass is starting to cure. It's still a little bit too soft for me to move it. I'm not going to cure it all the way out like this, uh, but I want to get it hard enough to where I can move it, sit it on the ground, and it can kind of finish its cure while I work on the bumper. Now, I'm not staying in here while this is running. I've just come in to film, and then I'm going to run back out. I feel like there's probably some sort of inherent danger here <laughs> with this thing running in a semi-enclosed space, but it is what it is. So I am trying to be safe, as safe as I can be, for you guys that are concerned. Um, but it is working. It does feel pretty good in here. So huge shout out I've got to be careful when I say this to one gas hole garage uh, For sending me Justin for sending me this heater. He messaged me. He's like, dude, can you use this? You look really cold. And I was like, yes, please. So uh, this thing has been a blessing It's the only reason we're getting this video out. So huge shout out to you, man. Thank you so much It really is making a big difference. I'll check in with you guys in another probably 30 minutes uh, and we'll move on to the bumper All right it's done. You can see the bumper is behind me. The fender, oh yeah. My wrist still isn't really working. It's right here and it's totally dry and awesome. So I'm gonna let that sit. I'm not gonna delaminate it yet. 
We're gonna let it sit for maybe overnight just to get it. I just wanna make sure it's totally good. I do not wanna do this ever again. Not ever again. I don't wanna make that fender again. So we're gonna move to the bumper. The bumper is a little more complex. It's a little bit scarier. There's like a lot of stuff going on. So I'm gonna break it up into four sections. The front bumper bar, either side, and then this little spoiler section down here. And hopefully we'll end up with a really good piece. Yeah, so I don't think this is gonna be very easy, but I think we can do it. I also am not gonna pre-cut this one. I'm gonna cut it as I go. And I'm gonna mix very little hardener into my resin so I have plenty of time to work. Um, I think that's gonna be the best bet. But I'll tell you what, this heater is working. I mean, it's actually pretty toasty in here. You can't see my breath anymore. I would say it's probably like 60, 65 degrees where I'm standing, um, which is great because it's like 30 degrees outside right now, Fahrenheit. So Celsius, I guess that's like, uh, what, zero? All right, so I guess it is time for a time lapse. It's been so cold, but I've used some heat. I've used a lot of time. It's been, I think, almost 24 hours since I laid this piece, and it's finally ready to come out of the mold. But before we do this one, I'm going to do the fender because it's going to be easier. cameras because I literally filled up a 64 gig memory card with video of me trying to get this thing off but I think I've almost got it I put a ton of pressure on this thing it was kind of a last-ditch effort and uh, I think that the, this bottom spoiler piece is the one that was stuck which it has a lot of resin in it just because of the shape I think I've almost got it out so I'm gonna make sure I caught this momentous occasion on film Please. Definitely gonna have some repair to do after this one. At least I'll have a part. Let's go, come on! So close. Try this side. Oh. 
just all the bad sounds, but. <laughs> Victory! Wow, that was difficult. Oh my goodness. All this green stuff you see is the PVA. Oh, and look, it did dry. I didn't think that gel coat was going to dry right there. <sighs> that was really hard. All right, let's see what we did. It all looks fairly decent. You know, it doesn't look bad. I was pretty worried. I'm gonna have to do some repair in some different areas, just stuff that didn't really take well, but that's fine. I'm not super worried about that. It will be minimal compared to what, I, what I'm used to doing. Got some flaky gel coat. So we still got to uh, oh, trim this thing up and bodywork it a little, but that is a bumper. Look at that. Very cool, and it is super light. So I can hold this. I'm not gonna check the weight just yet, but I'm holding that on one finger, and the other one I can't, it takes two hands. I mean, it's much, much heavier. So that's super cool. Yeah, this is awesome. It's always cool to see something you sculpted uh, out of a bunch of different stuff come together in one composite piece. It's very like, very weird, very weird sensation. So the next move is gonna be trim everything up and put it on the car. Now the bumper is not gonna go on the car as it sits. Anyway, it's gonna mount to the fenders and stuff, but I don't have flanges for that. I didn't build them into the mold on purpose because I just wasn't sure. So we'll get it on the car and then figure out how we're gonna mount it. But we'll use some, we'll bond everything. We'll bond all the mounting tabs and stuff. We'll get to that. <sighs> all right, I'm taking a break. We'll be back. fits way better than the passenger side does, which is great. It means we're getting better. Um, I think a huge part of that is making this all one piece and not adding our seam like we did. Now the other side, we'll get we'll get it to fit. It's not that big of a deal. I um, mean, it fits pretty close, but definitely, definitely count better. I'm only using three screws because unlike the other one, since we pulled this mold twice, it's the second time we try to do this. Um, the screw holes, I can't see them anymore. So. I was able to line a couple up, but I'm just not going to go crazy yet. Also, because we got this thing jacked up, this fender wraps up underneath the um, fender of the actual car, and that spot we can't get underneath right now because it's on jacks. So I'm just going to put it up here for looks so you guys can see what it looks like. We'll have to take it back off when we pull the car off the jack stands, and then we can mount it for real. You get the idea. This goes like that. All that mounts together. It's gonna work great. Now I made this a little bit flexible, which is cool, so this will flow a lot better. And extending this was a really good idea because now that this is all in and mounted up, I've got a lot more space to kind of move the bumper in and out and get it settled. Overall, very, very stoked. This thing feels awesome. It's super, super light. The design came out really good. Everything looks super symmetrical. And because it's all one piece, I have a lot more kind of flexibility and ability to move and modify it so that it all lines up like it's supposed to, which we will get to. Um, 
I'm gonna start kind of figuring out where I want all my mounting tabs to be, start figuring out what I'm gonna make those out of, I think probably 16 gauge uh, sheet metal, and uh, start mounting everything together so this front end can be completely done. Now I am, now this was a huge undertaking. This is only, this bumper is the third fiberglass mold I've ever made, and it was definitely challenging, but it's done, and look at it, it looks awesome. Uh, so you, you can see like we've got to pull this down, we've got to do some tri more trimming and stuff. So I know it's rough, but you can kind of get an idea, especially looking down the side of the car, of where we're going and what this car is going to look like. And I think it's going to look so, so cool. All right. It's freezing, so I'm going <laughs> it's freezing, so I'm gonna end this video here. Um, but next week, uh, we will be rebuilding our front suspension. I've got a, cool, a couple of cool things that are going to help us lower the car a good bit and uh, still make it drive really well. So it's going to be a really fun one. Listen, if you support the channel, if you love Built, Click that link below. Raid made this video possible, um, and it's sponsorships and ads like those that allow us to keep going and keep providing free content that's getting better but also more expensive. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.